Okay. And uh, so when we're, this should only take about 20 to 30 minutes tops, shouldn't be longer than that. Um, and when you respond to each question, feel free to go into as much detail as you wish. Um, but if you're uncomfortable answering a question, don't feel like you have to answer by any means. Um, we'll just move on to the next question. Um, but anyway, that's all for me. Um, do you have any questions for me, I guess, before, you, before we jump into it? No, let's do it. All right, let's do it. Um, so first off, Mr. Rogers, uh, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and the name of your uh, like initiatives within mutual aid and where its efforts are focused? Okay, I, well, I'm Harry Rogers. I, I'm a Vietnam veteran. Uh, I've been involved in civil and human rights for the last four, uh, four decades. Uh, um, my entry was probably uh, Dr. King's uh, speech in one of his speeches, a letter from a Birmingham city jail, he said, we'll not have to apologize for the vitriolic actions of the few, mm -hmm. but of the appalling silence of the many. And I realized that I, I had been part of that appalling silence and uh, it's time for me to care about people other than my, by myself. Sure, but well, great. Um, well, I, I guess when you think about the term mutual aid, Mr. Rogers, uh, what, what kind of pops into your head? What does it mean for you? I, yeah, me, mutual aid for me is, it, uh, I, again, hearkening back to the civil rights movement, the, mm -hmm. the blessed community is, uh, is serving others and, and being part of uh, something bigger than, your, uh, bigger than yourself. I like uh, mutual and with mutual aid, I've done vaccination events, uh, help uh, gather supplies. Uh, mutual aid for me has been a way, uh, almost all of my other work in uh, civil and human rights has been structured. I, okay. like, the, I like the idea of mutual aid is uh, we're, not, we're not structured, but we do serve, uh, we do serve, uh, serve others. And right. we're not. And the other thing I like about it is non hierarchical. It's just a, a, a bunch of people that have gotten together and say that and said that uh, uh, we want to we want to help our community in whatever ways and in, in whatever gifts each of us have individually. So y'all don't have like specific, I guess, job titles or anything like that when you're doing your work. Is that what you mean? We we don't. I, okay. uh, but. The, the nice thing about it, it is that uh, most of us uh, are activists in, in some form or another, environmental okay. or, or, or uh, divert, you know, uh, are activists in other, in, in other forms. Gotcha. So that we bring a, a collection of skills, mutual aid brings a collection of skills that uh, so, so it makes it easier for us to respond to, to uh, up, you know, the, the, needs organically mm -hmm. okay so we're not it's not actually a campaign it's more a, a, a response to something that's happening i got you well and, and i know you mentioned earlier uh, you said you've been involved in vaccination events you know gathering supplies um what brought you like to those issues uh like like what problem i guess are you trying to really solve um when, when you when you do these events well, a vaccination event is really a response to uh, uh, it's it, uh, I, me not understanding how so many in of our so many in our country has been has been have been so disruptive and 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 have not uh, what maybe in previous generations it's been much easier for people just to say that. This is a public health, uh, you know. This is a public health issue, okay. and it's not a political issue. And and the concern that I had that uh, too many have made it something that it's uh, something it, that it's not. And mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to help change that narrative. Awesome. And well, the, the events I've done is, have been in underserved communities too. Okay. Two events I've done it, have, have been in. Uh, Communities that find it a little bit more difficult than than uh, than uh, than others to to access the, the vaccine. Sure, and and another question. I know um, 
you mentioned earlier, you know, you're being a Vietnam veteran. I'm just curious, thinking about back in those times, I mean, was the level of distrust, I guess, of the government, um, like when you go to these vaccine events, was it that bad even, you know, back in the Vietnam era? Um, or would you say it's worse? Oh, no, yeah, significantly worse. Okay. Uh, there, were, there were people that were opposed to the Vietnam War. As a matter of fact, the woman that I was married to, was, we, we often wondered what would have happened Really? When, if we'd have met when I, when I was in uniform, we actually met many years uh, later. But, okay. uh, you know, in ret you know, I, I know that, uh, that back then people had felt passionately about issues. Sure. The difference, the difference now and, and then, and I, and I hope that you're going to be part of that change. The difference now and then is that there are, there is a group now that actively want to divide us and their strategy for us, for them moving forward is to, is to promote that division. Uh, and that's not, you know, I have relatives, when I was your, your age, I had relatives that were Republican and, and Democrat, but sure. there wasn't, the, uh, there, there wasn't one side doing their best to exploit that hate and exploit that division. So I, I, I'm trying to change that narrative too. And, and uh, coming back to mutual aid, uh, it's person to person contact. And, and, I, and I think that that's what that's helpful too. Okay. I think that us talking to each other uh, makes a difference. Definitely, no, as long, you know, as long as the dialogue is civil and constructive, definitely the way to go. Um, as opposed to, the, you know, street violence and any, any of that. Um, well, and I, I guess circling back to more of uh, the work you've been doing with mutual aid, what uh, challenges have you faced um, during the course of your work? I, you know, the, the, the challenge, because we're not a, a, a nonprofit and, uh, and it's, it's a little bit more difficult for us to, to get the resources and provide the resources that, uh, that we'd like to. Gotcha. Uh, that, so, so finding the resources uh, is, probably the, is probably the biggest challenge. Okay. Because finding the needs isn't hard at all. Right. And I, I guess building off of that, um, how do you address that challenge? I mean, do you, how, how, I guess, what's your main way of fundraising for these efforts? It's a, a, a personal appeal. So I'm learning more uh, reluctantly uh, about social media mm -hmm. and how to reach out to people in so, social media. media. Uh, we're a good, good group. You've got a, uh, Debbie's a uh, Debbie's a linchpin in and uh, in mutual aid, and we've got some others that are really skilled at uh, finding you know finding people. You know, I, I, we talked a little about it earlier is that we have so many different gifts in mutual aid, mm -hmm. and Debbie's uh, done a good job. Good job of, um, of Professor Billings to you, I guess. Awesome. Has done a good job. Yeah. Has, good, has done a good job of of recruiting the the different skills. I don't, okay. You know, I mentioned that uh, I, I am involved in a project called um, Peace, the Columbia Peach Pole Initiative, and in a probably this month we will be dedicating a, a, a piece of art, a piece of work called a Peach Pole. Okay. And it's got a pole at the top of it, and it has on that pole are eight languages that say "May peace prevail on Earth." Uh, two of those languages are Gullah and. Uh, in Catawba because we're here in South Carolina, right. Spanish and English. So uh, that fits into mutual aid too. The, the, uh, my, I know that the way to peace is to, uh, is to make it more, uh, more uh, we've got lots of people that are, are willing to champion war. I, uh, my Vietnam experience has led me to, to uh, the place that I, I want to promote peace on earth rather than okay. war. Well, and going back, I guess, talking about our class, we're looking at the differences between like mutual aid approaches versus versus uh, charity approaches like Salvation Army or Toys for Tots and those different mm -hmm. charitable organizations. So 
just in your opinion, I guess, why do you think that a mutual aid approach is needed or is better than the charity approach? I, I, it, 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 it's ability to respond that the, because uh, if you're a nonprofit, Mm -hmm. uh, then you have to provide some st structure and you have to provide some uh, mechanisms for, for people to access that aid. The, the, uh, the advantage of mutual aid is that uh, uh, we, can, we can assess the situation uh, immediately and, we, and there isn't a process, the, the people that we're serving, there isn't a process they have to go through uh, sure. to access the, the, the aid that we can uh, that we can give them it's not unusual for us to uh, to counsel the in, in mutual aid also it should be clear that that uh, if we can and as often as not we direct the the people that we're helping is that there is someone that that can provide deeper and more uh, uh, more uh, uh, the, the the direct help that that you need so uh, so mutual aids not uh, is uh, we can there are things that we can do immediately and directly sure but at the same time we can we can say that uh, we want to help you transition in, into a better better life and and it is our hope that uh, in in three months or two months or in six months you don't need us but you're right. instead you're helping someone else. Okay. And, and I didn't realize with the, um, you know, traditional charities, there was that much red tape involved. I had no idea. Um, so that's great. Yeah. That y'all, y'all can cut right through it. You mentioned Salvation Army and, and uh, all of a gospel and they, and they do a good job. I, I did mm -hmm. a listening project where we listened to a number of uh, uh, homeless people mm -hmm. and, and, a, and, a, and a number of the homeless, homeless people told us that, uh, they felt that going to to some of those places uh, was demeaning, and, and what those places asked them to to do is uh, was an awfully intrusive. So that would be a significant difference in mutual aid and 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 Oliver uh, Oliver God, Gospels. Some of the nonprofits have have uh, competing agendas when they're when they're serving others. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. So far, so good, Mr. Rogers. So far, so good. Um, I, I guess the next question on my list as well uh, is how would someone get involved um, with your mutual aid effort? Well, they can certainly email me or, or they can <laughs> any, actually they can, we, we have a, we have a website, Mutual okay. Aid Midland, that, uh, that, you know, we have an online presence. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, and is that is that how you found out about it online, or, or did you, I guess, know someone um, uh, within the well, I, I, a little bit of each. Debbie okay. and I, 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 I am very interested in migrant issues, and okay. uh, Debbie and I have, have worked on a, on a, in other areas, and that's what you know. I was saying that it, it, uh, mutual aid has done a good job of, of find, all of us are doing some kind of active work. So to Debbie was probably my uh, Professor Billings. I, right. I should used to call her. You're that. good, you're good. She, uh, I knew that she was doing it. And I knew that if she was doing it, this is something that I would, uh, this would be something that I would be comfortable doing also. Okay, I love great. The people I work, that, that, that's the other advantage of mutual aid. I love the people I'm working with. It, it, they are my extended family now. That's awesome to hear. Um, I get another question I have for you, Mr. Rogers, is I know, I know you mentioned just previously um, that you are really passionate about uh, migrant work. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm just curious, are, are you like personally involved with that? Like, have, have you dealt with that issue yourself or family members? Is that what drew you to it? Or? I, I have, uh, but I okay. also, I've worked with a, I'm a uh, diverse, I, a National Coalition, National Coalition Building Institute trainer, and I've also done a, a program called Help and Increase Peace in High Schools, where uh, 
focuses on on diversity and self esteem and 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 conflict resolution. So that's that's probably been my more, more my more active active involvement. It's a okay. it's a week weekend process with a with young with young people with a that's experiential and experimental learning. Sure. And it's um, it's it's exercises that uh, help you look at diversity and and uh, I do it in adults and I do it in, in high school students. I like it in high school students because they're much more able to be uh, introspective. They're much more able to, to look inside themselves and, and ask themselves, am I who I, I know who I want to be. Sure. I'm just a little bit more difficult to, to look at what we're doing and, 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 and make that connection. That's what I love right. about the class that you're taking and the direction that you're taking. I know that, that, um, that everyone in that class and your, your fellow classmates are, are saying that, well, I want to, I want to, I want to make a difference. Definitely. Definitely. And, and what, speaking of differences, um, what impact do you think your mutual aid efforts have made in the community? Like, have you seen significant progress? Oh yeah. What, uh, yeah, we, we've helped a number of people uh, directly by providing rent, uh, providing food. Um, Dylan Gunnels, who's um, uh, a member of our group, is uh, with Haven Home, which is working on uh, housing issues. Uh, so it, uh, uh, we, we vaccinated three, four hundred people. Wow. We might not have ever gotten vaccinated. At, and it, uh, the other thing that mutual aid does is that w I work with DHEC. Okay. I work with a, a young woman uh, that has a beauty parlor. Uh, they gave us a beauty parlor for the weekend. <laughs> awesome. Uh, to, for us to do vaccines in her in her, <laughs> in her home. So it, uh, almost always mutual aid, when they do those kinds of efforts, it's in partnership with uh, with others. There okay. was also, which is the uh, uh, migrant group, a self-help mi migrant group was also involved with it. So mutual aid tries, we try to partner as best we can to, to, <clears throat> to a maximum, you know, to, uh, I'm looking for the words, I'm not finding it. Oh, no, you're it, good. It, it, you involve, the more, the more, other people you can involve in the work that you're doing, uh, that that makes a difference too. And so have you finding seen partners, or, finding partners? Mutual aid does an awfully good job of finding partners and 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 how we can help others. And would you say that I guess the rate of reciprocation, so to speak, like when you help one person, are they very likely to go and you know help another person themselves? Have you seen that? Oh, that's that's well said. No, that that that. Uh, I'd say that's an that's an accurate insight. Okay, that's a normal occurrence. Got gotcha. you. All right. Um, well, Mr. Rogers, uh, that's all I had for you. Um, is there is there anything else you'd like to mention? I guess for the recordings or anything else you'd like to discuss? Or? Well, I have not asked Professor Professor Billings, but I gave her a I asked her to present to the class. There's this song called Ella's Song. Ella's song, okay. It's by uh, it's about Ella McPherson, okay. And it's the Sweet Honey in the Rock, and it's uh, We Who Believe in Freedom Cannot Rest. We Who Believe in Freedom Cannot Rest Until It Comes. The last three verses of that song, and you should listen to it. Everyone in the class should listen to it. Okay. I don't know. Maybe we got an old guy in the in the class. I don't know. The last <laughs> three, the, song, the last three verses in that song are about turning the struggle over to the young because they can stand against the wind. The last three verses are, uh, are, uh, are recognizing uh, what your class is doing and what you're gonna do when you, uh, when you go out. And well, if, if Professor Billings has not played uh, Sweet Honey in a Rock, I would, I would ask you to not. encourage your fellow <laughs> classmates to, uh, you're, skilled, you're skilled enough to go on there, look up Sweet Honey in the Rock, Sweet Honey and, the play Rock. Okay. and play Ella's song. Sweet Honey, I, I have that down. Okay, I will I will make sure uh, Dr. Billings <laughs> gets that song well, playing. Or, or, or the other thing you can do is share it with your classmates. That gotcha. I, and that the person that you interviewed 
uh, uh, appreciates and and uh, and knows that uh, that's who you are and that's who you will be as the last three verses in that song. You're gonna you're gonna go out and and you're gonna make a change in the world and that's uh, and that's a good thing. Well, I hope so. Um, I, I'm thankful for your confidence, Mr. Rogers. I, I greatly appreciate it. I thank want to thank you for your time uh, for this interview. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's been a great pleasure getting to know you and talk with you about your different, uh, mutual aid initiatives and how, how you've been helpful, uh, to the Columbia community. So th just thank you very much. Well, I hopefully we can involve some of, some of you in, uh, more directly in, in mutual aid. Definitely. The more the, the, more the merrier. Join our family. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, you have a great day, Mr. Rogers. Uh, it's great talking to you and, uh, hope to see you again soon. Okay, bye-bye. All right, bye-bye.